Today is International Women's Day and its theme for this year is breaking the bias. Already, Nigerian women seem to be uh, doing just that as members of the House of Representatives have just rescinded their decision on three bills early rejected in the process of the 1999 Constitution Amendment. Now, the bills are on indigenship, citizenship and 35% affirmative action for women. The bills will be recommended for consideration and will be part of the second batch of the constitutional amendment to be presented in a couple of months. Now, this development comes as women stormed the National Assembly today, lamenting the rejection of the women-related bills. Well, joining us to discuss this is Anne Kiel Briggs. She is a human rights activist and, of course, uh, Obongawan Barbara James is a women's rights activist. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. And happy me. International Women's Day. Same to you here. Great. Thank you very much. Great. Great to be. I'm going to start with you, Ankyo. Um, it's interesting that we're at this juncture. For some women, if not most Nigerian women, this is a, a, a win because uh, I remember last week the reactions that I was getting from women when the bills were thrown out. Um, in fact, it took the wife of, it took the First Lady and some other women to come into the National Assembly uh, for this bill. And they all left uh, very disappointed. Uh, aside from the fact that this bill has been rescinded, why do you think it's taken the Nigerian woman so long to be able to be heard uh, in terms of um, these kinds of issues, bills when it comes to indigenship? I mean, a Nigerian man is allowed to um, give his wife uh, indigenship, but a woman who's married to an outsider cannot do that. So it seems like the woman keeps taking the back seat. Why has it been that for so long? Um, good evening, everyone. I believe it has been so for so long, uh, simply because um, there is a lot attached to it. Uh, we have cultural issues in Nigeria and in Africa. We have um, religious issues uh, and custom customary things. Uh, women are not supposed to be here. Women are not supposed to be there. Um, you, you should be seen and not heard. Um, if you recall in 2016, uh, the issue of um, women belonging to the other room and um, belonging in the kitchen and stuff like that at, the, at an international forum by no less than the president of Nigeria. I mean, when women are faced with this type of um, uh, oppression, if you like, within the political system, when um, attitude like that is coming from the president, you begin to wonder um, what, um, what it is that is going to become of women in politics. And also, uh, like I said, women, um, we have all these cultural biases where it seems as if, if a woman is in politics or is in activism, um, she's got to be single, perhaps she has no husband, perhaps, and if she does, maybe the husband is dead or divorced because it seems as if uh, women can't really uh, assert themselves without um, actually having meanings read, external meanings and derogatory meanings read, uh, read into, into it. These are some of the obstacles that women face when they, uh, go, when they go into politics. So I'm not surprised that, first of all, women are rising up now and um, to the point where we're having a situation where the men are going to step back. Look, we, uh, we had bills that were presented on behalf of women. Those bills were, were for the benefit of women. Now, when that is presented in the National Assembly, where women voted for men, and then these men turn around and deny us things that are meant to be in our interest, you begin to wonder what else these men are prepared to uh, to deny women in politics in Nigeria um, as a whole. Mm. Interesting. Um, Obama and Barbara, let me let me push you a bit. Um, as we see today, I'm sure that you're aware, most of the CEOs in Nigerian banks are women. Women are breaking the glass ceiling in these regards. But when it comes to politics, it seems to be. Uh, the woman finds herself in between a rock and a hard place. And I was just saying it a few hours ago that 
the most a woman holds uh, position, position wise in political parties is either she's a treasurer or the woman leader. But then the woman is the same person who galvanizes support. They seem to be the ones who are the one that brings people together to vote, just as um, Ms. Briggs has said. So why is it so difficult for us to break grounds in the political system? Aside from the cultural bias, could women be also part of their own problem? So I want to put a, a broader perspective on this struggle. All through history, the struggle for rights, civil rights, human rights, and indeed women's rights has been a journey and not a destination. So these things take time and it requires the people concerned, in this case, us women, to raise up our voices collectively and ask for our rights. You see, even in developed economies like the United States, they are still trying to get civil rights for black people, extending rights to minority groups. So this is a journey. And the time has come in 2022 where we women have spoken, are speaking with one voice to say, not just in the boardroom, but in the political sphere, we want to have a seat at the table. Now, some women have already broken the bounds, as you said, but it is important. And what we want now is for that opportunity to be available to all women and for that opportunity to be embedded in our constitution so that any young girl knows that the constitution affords her the opportunity to reach her height, whether it's politically, in business, and in whatever sphere she is, she is a part of this country. She has a right to aspire and to get to the top of the country. Mm. Let me let me just push you further on 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 in the political uh, um, sphere. Now, we we've seen. I mean, uh, we've seen uh, the case of uh, the only female president that year who didn't even have her friends vote for her. Um, but maybe we should also consider, or should we consider, um, the politics uh, at the local level? Um, is that not where we should start from? I mean, again, we see women come together to put monies together to buy a Uh We see women put monies together to go on girls' trips. How many women can come together to support a female candidate, whether it be a councillor, whether it be a local government chairman, whatever it may be, can we see that galvanized support? And how do we even go about it in the first instance? Because I, what I saw today at the National Assembly was applaudable. But how do we take a step further? So that is very important. Women need to continue to organize and to focus our attention, our energies, our finances, our resources towards what we want. Today, I have a, an aspirant for House of Rep in my constituency, who is a woman. Today, I have a woman governor aspirant in my state, Ambassador Koyo Toyo, amongst the dozen other men who are aspiring for the governorship of Cross River State. So increasingly, with this voice that we've come out with, women will aspire. When you don't have role models there, then it's difficult for women to aspire. When you don't have the collective calling for this, then it is difficult. So we hope that coming into 2023, women will organize, we will focus our votes, we will vote for women, and we will vote for men who recognize the important role that women play. So mm. that's what we're going to do going into 2023. Through the political parties and through our communities, we will do that. Great. Back to you, uh, Ms. Briggs. She, she talked about mentoring, and I, and I want to push you on that. You are one of the strongest voices in the Niger Delta. Uh, we, we, we saw you push um, for young people uh, in, in the thick of the Niger Delta militancy. Are, are there young women that you are mentoring? Because you see, like I said, a lot of young women are yet to understand or come into the, the fullness of their purpose, and they need some hand-holding. Is there a fora in, let's say, for, for example, River State or Biosa State, where young women are groomed um, for leadership? I mean, we see these things happen in other places, but is there some, such a thing? Because we also see young men being groomed for leadership, but how many young women are being handheld or 
taught what to expect in the future and how to be ready for it? Um, it it's one thing to be um, to groom either young ladies or a young uh, gentlemen for political political roles in Nigeria as we as we have it today. But you see, when when this grooming is going on, and then on the other hand, you hear the the people who are supposed to be grooming them saying, you know what? We do agree that it is about time for youths to uh, to get to the table, to take a seat at the table. But then you have to wait until um, I, I am done with what I am doing. That means that if I'm 70-something years old and I'm aspiring to be the president of Nigeria and um, I need uh, the, uh, the support or the galvanizing of youths to, uh, to support me, that is very much okay. But then you have to wait until I'm maybe 80-something years old. Now, for me, I don't call that uh, grooming, uh, grooming anybody. It's, uh, it's, a form of, it's a form of deceit. Now, in my own process, uh, you, you referred to the Niger Delta um, and in River State, Bielsa State. You find, I find definitely uh, in the past few decades that I've been at this, that we are in a struggle within a struggle. Women are in a struggle within a struggle. They are in a struggle even for fellow women to take them seriously. And mm -hmm. um, we are in a struggle where our folks, our husbands, our brothers, our uncles, our fathers don't take us seriously. So in, in my own case, um, I came from a background of being encouraged to be who, whom I have become today. But how many people, how many young ladies have had that sort of opportunity? So we do need to start with our young women, starting from um, primary school age, to make them to understand that they need um, to be uh, uh, to be strengthened in the way they think for themselves, and they need to acquaint themselves with justice, what is right and what is wrong, what is a truth and what is a lie, um, and that they have to participate in uh, the role of nation building. They have to participate in the role of becoming whatever you uh, you want to become in the in the future. So it's an uphill battle for women. It, mm -hmm. it is an uphill battle uh, for, uh, for young people today because of the, uh, the, the, the strategies they must take, which is sacrificial, and they have to be very careful not to compromise what they are aiming for. It's so easy to find yourself in a compromising circumstances and situation, even before you know actually mm -hmm. that you, you, you that you finally find yourself in an entrapment, if you if you like, but it is possible. I have come to realize that it is possible, first of all, to be able to orientate our our youths, our young women, particularly, um, for them to understand that. They and they alone must make these sacrifices and must participate in the processes that they they are dreaming about for the within the next ten years or twenty years, depending on on where on where you are today. I see no reason um, why we don't have female governors. I know Koyo uh, very well. She's um, uh, she's my friend. Uh, she's a colleague of, of sort in activism. Um, but I also do know how far she has come, you know, to uh, to find herself at a point today where she's actually accepted that she will aspire. And not only that she will aspire, that she does qualify to aspire. And quite honestly, that she's very likely uh, to do a much better job than anybody else uh, have done before before her. But as I said, it, it is an uphill battle, especially okay. for women. Okay. Back to you, um, Ms. James. Um, still talking about mentoring here. Um, how do we catch them young? Because 
Um, look around you. Uh, I was just talking to a young lady a, a few minutes ago and she talked about social media and TikToking. We see a lot of interesting, sometimes very saddening things on social media and a poor representation of our young women. Who are these models that these young women can look up to? Do we have enough of them in our communities, in, in our world? I mean, it's easy to say, oh, I like Anna poor, but she's on CNN. Can we look around and find one that we can, you know, uh, say, well, that's my role model. That's the kind of person that I want to mentor me. Um, are these young people even being pointed in that direction in the first instance? I think for the very young, we need to look to the educational system. From primary school, young women, young girls, and young men need to be taught about the role of women in society, the role of women in nation building, the role of men in nation building, and having men and women side by side in that process. So we have, a, we, mo children spend most of their time in school. So that is where it needs to start, in primary school, in secondary school, in university. These structures, when they are setting up uh, institutions and clubs and uh, organizations, those places need to be gender friendly, gender neutral, and so that they learn and instill the, the principles of gender equity from a young age throughout their educational system and into society. And the more we have role models in politics, in business, you mentioned that the banking MDs today, the more we have those role models, the more this will become the norm. Today, it's available for very few women. And we want to mainstream the idea of gender equity, gender balance in our society. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit, uh, and I'm going to pose the same question to both ladies. Um, I don't necessarily know if we should put that at the foot of the educators. I'm saying this because in today's world, it's the big brother celebrities. It's the money guys that are more intriguing for our youngsters. And so they skip the process in between. They see the finish, the finished product, um, and so that's who everybody wants to be because these guys are the permit me to say the thirty billion gang or whatever they call them these days. Um, and so they don't necessarily want to look to you because you know you might not necessarily be um, wearing the kinds of things that they're interested in or driving the kinds of cars and living the kind of life, the jet set life. So again, should that responsibility solely be to the educators? Yes, I know that, you know, if you go to school abroad, you have bring your dad to work day or days that they bring in people that uh, do different things. And so these children can aspire to be one of those. But we don't have that in our systems here yet, I believe. But what, where does the family come in in all of this? So I still believe the school system is very important because that is a structured environment and the issue of nation building broadly, including the role of women, should be taught in schools, really. There is also a role for the family and society and celebrity culture. But you know, with TikTok and social media and celebrity culture, these things happen in two, three minutes, if that. Whereas nation building is a serious issue that we need to be discussed from different perspectives and delved into. So it's not something a celebrity on TikTok can, can transmit in a, a, a four-second four video. These are serious issues that need to be talked about seriously within the proper structure and context. It's mm. multi-layered and everyone has a role to play. Religion has a role to play, our traditional rulers at traditional institutions have a very important role to play. Mm. For me, as a woman of Kensha Town, I have a role as a traditional ruler to provide an example to the young girls and women in my society. And even having that position says to those women, here is somebody who has attained this position, and I can do so within a traditional context. Mm. So that's, that's important. Okay, finally, uh, Ms. Briggs, before you go. Um, <laughs> I was listening so intently. Um, let me say this. When I was growing up, and uh, I, I mean, quite honestly, you can't talk to someone like me without me having to refer back to when I was growing up. I think I'm not exacerbated at this point in my life 
by um, by what is available uh, to our children and grandchildren at such a young age. Because one, um, I'm in tune with it. And then second, because I have had a background from where I grew up where these uh, exposures were not there and therefore could not have been detrimental. Now, having said that, um, when you are also growing up, before you even get to go to school, um, the, the, the major role, uh, role makers or the people you look up to are your parents, are the community, are the society within your immediate uh, surrounding or environment. And so um, you pick up from there solid, um, solid behavior, solid way of thinking, of responsibility uh, towards society even, and your role within that society. Now, we lack that today. And so we need to be able uh, for our leaders that or people that are aspiring to uh, to take up a leadership role and even people like me who can connect the past and the, the and today the present and even the future because of our past background have a lot of role um, um, to play in making sure that what seems to be missing today the uh, the responsibility growing at a at a young age of what and who you become in the future is so wrapped around what you have seen um you look at what's happening you mentioned it okay look at tiktok which was uh, just something that came up just before the pandemic came and because of the time that tiktok came you could see a lot of things i was horrified i mean there is no reason why we cannot use tiktok to, uh, to, uh, to drive the process of political um, uh, process without our young ladies or our young men dragging their, um, uh, their trousers all the way down uh, okay. to their pipe, okay. our, our young women twerking or whatever it is called. You know, so it's not what is available, it's how you use it okay. and the content okay. you create with what is available. Well, ladies, unfortunately, time is not our friend. I want to say thank you to um, Ankil Briggs, a human rights activist, and Obama and Barbara James, a women's rights activist. Thank you so much, ladies. Uh, we're hoping that one way or the other, we will be able to catch our young girls, um, you know, catch them young. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you so much, and uh, happy Women's Day, everyone. Same <laughs> to you. Women's Day. Same to you. Well, thank you all for staying with us as we round off the show today. With, uh, we're looking at Nigerians as they give their take on the bias uh, that women experience everywhere. And that's on Street View as well. I'm Mary Anakon. I'll see you tomorrow on Plus Politics as we talk for development. What a man can do, man can do better. And in this society that we are now, everybody has their own rights to do what they want. Like, it's good for everybody to have their own right. Like, if you feel like going to school to have your own certificate is your, okay by you. Like, it's not by force that, that somebody should tell you, yeah, you, are, you don't have any right to go to school. All these days, International Women's Day, International Father's Day, International Whatever Day, how does it reflect into our life in Nigeria? There can never be equality any day, anywhere, in, not even in Africa, not even in the Western world. But however, having said that, we appreciate our mothers, our sisters, gender equality in political representative in Nigeria, forget it. Don't forget it. I feel like they're supposed to be the same as men. Because nowadays, because of the way our great-grandfather did and said that they're supposed to be in the kitchen. And because of that, some people, they didn't even send their women to school. Even me, because I'm, because I'm here, it's because of what my dad did. It's women's right. They have right to say they want to go to school. Because me, I didn't go to school because my dad said I was a, I'm a lady, that I can't do anything. The only thing that they have to do is for me to get married. 
and go to my husband's house because they think that it's only the men that are useful. So I don't feel that way. I feel we are equal. As a woman, I think a woman should go as far as she can, especially in a country where it doesn't give her the space. There's a saying that says that um, if you train a girl child, you train a nation. So that shows that a lot can be done when we train a girl child. A lot can be achieved when women go further in life. And we can see it in the case of Ngozi Okonjo Iwela. We can see it in the case of Chimamanda Adichie. We can see it in the case of Asisa Atoshola. So we can see that there's, there are great potentials in women. And if we can help them maximize it, we just need what a country that can, what, that can encourage them.